to start. Oh. Okay. Welcome back to our channel, guys. It has been a long, long time since I've been in front of a camera, since I've vlogged, since I've recorded anything at all. Um, I've just been dealing with a lot of personal situations in my life right now that have required me to kind of detach myself from our YouTube channel and from social media in a sense. I've been very um, laid back with posting on social media. If I do, it's like a quick story on something that Kai is doing or a quick photo of Kai. But um, I've just been in my own little world and I kind of left Kenny to kind of bridge the gap and to fill you guys in on what's been going on on his end so that I can have time to deal with what I've had to been dealing with. Um, most of you know my brother from our channel. Um, he's been in a few of our videos. He was in the Father's Day prank that I did on my, on, that I did on Kenny. Um, and the joke ended up really being on him. Two bucks. Two bucks so far. I want some. I don't know how much I want. I want some. Okay. One extra. Okay. And with his permission and his approval, I am going to tell you guys what has been going on and why I haven't been able to be as involved in our channel lately. September 8th, I got a phone call at around um, 9.15, 9.30 in the morning and it was from my brother's phone. Usually, my brother will either text or FaceTime me if he's trying to get in contact with me. So when I saw that it was a regular phone call, a little bit of me in my head said, hmm, this is weird. But I just figured maybe he was calling to see if I cooked breakfast or not to see if he can come by. Um, what was even more weird is that I know that at that time on a Sunday, He's usually in Bridgeport, Connecticut, playing um, a game at his flag football league. So he's been doing it for like two or three years now. So we just know that that's where he always is on a Sunday in the morning. Um, I answer the phone nonetheless, obviously, because he's my brother and I would answer the phone call anyway. But um, I was expecting to hear him on the other line, on the other side of the line. and. It turns out it was his teammate, one of his teammates, who called me to tell me that a situation happened where my brother was attacked from behind and punched in his face. So I guess what had happened was a fight broke out from two opposing teammates and some of the guys were trying to break it apart and in turn ended up causing more fights to break out all around the field. Um, I saw the video and there was so much chaos. Um, it turns out that another, as my brother was going to break up a fight between his teammate and another guy, um, the opposing team kind of told him like, we got it, you're good, don't worry about it, like just, just get out of here. And while my brother was gonna back off, another fight broke out. My brother is very much like a very non-confrontational kind of guy when it comes to sports. He's usually there to do business, conduct business, do what he does, and then leave. So, and for those of you also who don't know, he was in the army, so he's been trained to be in mass chaos situations, and he knows how to handle those kind of things. Um, I'm sorry, I know I just like flipped back and forth on what I was trying to tell you guys, but I felt like I had to like kind of let you know the background of him for a minute. Um, he's trained in 
you know, knowing how to handle those kind of situations. So without having to react in the way of fight or flight, you know, he knows exactly what to do and he's really composed in those kind of situations. Um, so as the other teammates told him like, we got this, get out of here, another fight broke out. And as he was trying to go to that situation to get his teammate out of there, um, a guy from the opposing team ran across the field and punched my brother in the face. He ran behind my brother, hit him on this side of his face, and that's when I get the phone call. Um, his teammate told me that he was bleeding really, really bad, that they couldn't stop the bleeding, that um, the ambulance was gonna take him to a hospital nearby. Um, I had Kyson obviously with me and I had my nephew with me. He had slept over that night. So I immediately get them dressed. I drop them off at my mother's house and I pick up my cousin to take the ride with me, um, which is an hour away. The hospital was an hour away. So it was an hour of not knowing what the hell was going on. Um, as I'm going up there, um, I get in touch with my sister who's a little bit closer because she had her softball game on a Sunday. Um, so she's about half an hour ahead of me just off of her location alone every week. Um, and she dropped everything that she could and immediately went to go to my brother also. So um, she got there a little bit before me. But um, after dropping off the kids, we head out straight to Bridgeport and my brother is in the emergency room and on the way there I'm getting phone calls from his teammate just kind of notifying me and letting me know what's going on and um, he told me when they got to the hospital and that my brother was checked in and that the police were there to file a report. Um, I didn't, I thought to myself like how bad could this really be to have to have needed a police report um, little <laughs> would I have known that when I got to the hospital, I got to the hospital and my sister was in the room with my brother and the lights were all off in the room and, um, my brother has a sheet uh, or a towel on his face and I can see that he's in a neck brace. Um, and the towel is drenched with his blood and it just shocked me to my core that someone can hurt someone that bad with one punch to have to have needed a neck brace because they didn't know if his neck was stable. They didn't know if any spinal damage was done. Um, and after about half an hour being there, my brother was just kind of in his own little world. He was knocked out from pain meds that they had given him. And um, he was just kind of oblivious to all of us being there. Um, the doctors came in or he eventually woke up, but he didn't take the towel off of his face um, but he needed a new towel and he was gonna ask for ice because they hadn't given him ice yet um, so as I'm calling my mom to let her know what's going on because she's now on her way also um, the nurse is changing my brother's towel and got him a bag of ice or an ice pack um, They take the towel off of his face and my heart instantly fell all the way down to the floor. My stomach dropped. I like lost my breath for a good couple of seconds because I could not imagine, I could not believe what I was seeing in front of me. Um, my brother's face was completely black and blue, um, everywhere between his mouth up to his 
eye, um, eyebrow was completely swollen, like three or four times the size of what your cheekbone and your eye should look like. Um, I'm gonna put a photo um, next. So if you wanna skip over that, I completely understand. But if you guys wanna get a grasp of the reality of the situation, take a look. So after about a hour and a half, two hours of waiting in the hospital, just waiting to hear what they found after doing CAT scans and x-rays and everything, um, they had told my brother that he had multiple broken bones in his face. Um, he had apparently broke the, if you can, see obviously it's not on me but uh he had had this right here had a gum ball sized hole in his cheekbone that was that's where your eyes held up from so he had a hole here he was broken bones in here a broken bone also with the size a whole size of a gumball in his eyebrow bone and then this in here the inside of his eye was also pushed back and broken into so his eye wasn't being held to the level the millimeter that it needed to be it could only withstand being dropped by a certain amount and it was dropped by about three or four more millimeters than what it was supposed to um, they determined that they couldn't help my brother anymore at that hospital so they had to transfer him to a specialist at a different hospital about half an hour away so the ambulance took him there and we waited to see a eye specialist and a maxillofacial specialist um i think that's what they're called um we had waited hours before we saw anybody and um they eventually came down at around 10 o'clock at night and told us that my brother was going to need facial reconstruction surgery to try and save his the holes in his face and more importantly his vision my brother since he was little has hasn't really been able to see out of his left eye um his good eye is his right eye and he has 20 20 vision there so hearing that your brother's vision now is completely vulnerable and in a state of what the app like WTF it's it was shattering um they had told him that he probably wouldn't be able to play any contact sports for at least a year um and that he would have to have surgery that week but they wanted the swelling in his face to go down um, so they eventually let my brother go out of the hospital at around one o'clock in the morning. And from there, it's just a waiting game to see when surgery is going to be. Um, but obviously my mom works, so he, he was going to stay with her for the time being. I then had to come in and every day, as soon as I would wake up, I would feed Kyson and I would go take care of my brother, help him, you know, just with anything. He couldn't see. He couldn't even really get out of bed. He was in and out of sleep for days. Um, it was bad. Um, a few days later, on a Wednesday, they told him that surgery is on Thursday um, at 7 o'clock in the morning. And we're thinking, great, this is finally going to happen. He's going to, they're going to be able to fix everything. Um, he is in prep, like they're prepping him for surgery and they're still worried about him not being able to see out of his eye. There was too much swelling in his eye for them to do surgery that day, so it didn't happen. So for a few more days, we're kind of in limbo, not knowing when surgery is going to be. They just said that sometime next week after he saw an eye specialist. The eye specialist said that I mean, there is swelling in the eye, but that they, were, they, they can go through with having surgery. Um, 
so he ended up having surgery that Monday, that Monday or Tuesday. That Tuesday, I had to leave the state that Monday. So yeah, Tuesday he had surgery, finally. And um, they were still unsure about his vision ever being the same again. He has still to this day um, trouble seeing clearly looking down or looking up. And that's a problem, obviously. Um, he week after week has had post-op um, appointments just to keep track of the swelling and his vision. And although the, that the vision is getting slightly better little by little, it's not where it needs to be for him to be completely on his own or to be completely self-sufficient because he still can't fully drive. The turns and you know the sudden movements when, that it takes to be a driver to look you know like your blind spots to turn that all affects him in his vision because it hasn't been used in so long and on top of that it's just not a hundred percent um so he finally went back on thursday for another post-op um, appointment and they finally cleared him to go back to work uh at the end of the month um he has to see an eye specialist again this week to make sure that the problems with his vision aren't because there's no swelling. They want there to be a little bit of swelling because that explains why he's having an issue with being able to see clearly all the time. Um, and on top of all this going on with my brother, I've been dealing and having to deal with packing up our apartment, getting ready to head out to Italy with Kenny, and some other big news that Kenny and I have been dealing with on our own um, that I really want to tell you guys about, but I feel like that's something I should do with Kenny, um, only because it's so important to both of us and it's such big news um, that I think it's best that I wait until he and I are together to announce our big news to you guys. Um, but as you guys can imagine, every day I've been dealing with my brother's injuries and kind of stepping in. I've stepped up on picking up his daughter from school on the days that he was supposed to have her, taking her to her softball clinic that my brother really wanted her to participate in, and basically being wherever my brother needs to be, I need to be is basically what my life has been like on top of taking care of Kai by myself and doing what I need to do to be okay um making time for you know my other family and my friends um it's just been a really rough, rough like month and a half guys and I hope you guys understand why I haven't been able to record I have tried and it just didn't feel right putting something out there that wasn't real. I mean, it was real, it happened, but it didn't feel like I was telling you guys the truth. I had taken Kai to a big fair that we had showed you guys last year when Kenny went to Kazakhstan, the Big E. I filmed that, but it just didn't feel right putting it out there to you guys knowing there were so many bigger things happening that were real life and i didn't want to make it seem like i was lying i guess that's how it felt i felt like i would be lying to you guys and i didn't want that and i also didn't want to put this story out there without my brother being okay with it first um and he was gonna do it himself and put it on his own YouTube channel, but he changed his mind and that's completely okay. And I had asked him if I can share it and he, he gave me his blessing. So I appreciate him for at least being that brave and upfront to at least have someone talk about it because what happened to him isn't okay. Um, this guy doesn't even know my brother, the guy who punched him. And now that there's an investigation going on and 
I hope soon that there's an end to it so that my brother can get his justice and so that we can feel like some, like he paid for what he did. It's not okay to just go and hit somebody. Like this guy ran across a football field for apparently no reason and struck my brother in the face. And somehow he felt that that was okay to brag about after. What kind of, like that's a coward thing to do. And it baffles me that a person my age feels like that's okay. He didn't do anything to him. My brother, I saw the video of, of their game. I saw the video of the fights breaking out. And literally this guy ran completely across the football field just to go and punch my brother. When everyone knew around this guy that my brother isn't that type of guy. And when he did hit him, everyone was questioning this guy like, what the hell is your problem? It, it literally sickens me that people are like that in this world still. That you think it's just okay to go and cause bodily harm to someone that did absolutely nothing to you. It's just, it baffles me. And when I see my brother and I'm so happy that he still finds it in his mind right now to at least go out in public because it was, a, as you guys saw in that photo, it was a bad injury. That's, a, that's assault on, <laughs> on every level imaginable. And for a while he didn't want to go outside and he just recently started leaving the house without these glasses that covered his face completely. And I'm glad that he's getting a little bit more confidence back, but I, I can only imagine all the things that run through his head throughout the day on looking into a mirror and not feeling like yourself. I, can, I can't imagine feeling like all of your confidence is now gone because someone else put your life in their hands. The doctors were surprised that no other damage was done to my brother's face. They were shocked actually that it was just a whole bunch of broken and shattered bones. They had to put a metal plate in my brother's face and mesh to form a cheekbone because he had nothing there. With one punch, how like, it just, it's freaking ridiculous how this whole situation happened and how that guy thought that it would be okay to do this to somebody that you don't even know. It's just crazy. Um, but I'm trying to contain my anger in the situation and just be the big sister, you know, that I, I'm supposed to be and help take care of him. Um, I know it's what he needs. I know it's what I need to do. And I know it's what my dad would have wanted me to do. Um, I felt like I really needed to share this because there's someone out there who probably has an injury too that they didn't ask for that is now affecting their day-to-day -day life. There's a, a sister or a brother who's helping take care of their family that may feel a little bit overwhelmed and know that you're not alone in that struggle. There are so many people who are going through the same thing as you and if you need help, if you need a breather, if you need to cry, if you need to punch a bag, if you need to yell, if you need to scream, it's okay. Um, this has kind of been very therapeutic for me to let this out. So I'm actually glad that my brother gave me the permission to share his story. Um, hopefully he'll be on, our, on my channel soon. Hopefully he feels confident enough soon to grace our channel again um but yeah thank you guys can't wait to get back to like actually vlogging and not just sit in front of a camera and talk for however long um but if you have not done so please subscribe to our channel follow our story our journey follow us as we go to italy and as our journey continues, we want you to be a part of it. Join our family, subscribe, hit that red button, 
make sure your post notifications are turned on and like always we will be back with more videos